Okay, good afternoon, good evening everyone. <coughs> First of all, I'd like to say that the mayor is in D.C. on business and Councilman Maldonado and um, Councilwoman Lobos, they're out of state at a conference as well. So this is it. <laughs> This is it. Um, I'd like to call the Wednesday, June 22nd, 2011 council meeting to order, and the time is 5.35. This evening, we will have the invocation by uh, Pastor Brock Schiffer, Pastor of Speedway Community Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. So, Pastor, and could we please stand? It's a privilege to open in prayer for the This Is It committee for the evening. <laughs> Heavenly Father, on this Father's Day week, we're reminded that we truly do have a Heavenly Father that far surpasses any earthly being. Father, we thank you for what you mean in our lives. We thank you that you provide and you only provide the answers that matter. As diversified as this city is, as diversified as this country is, Father God, we can unite under you and your son. And so I ask that you would bless these endeavors, that you would bless Tallahassee, that you would bless Homestead, you would bless each and every family member here this evening. And Father, that collectively, collectively, we would put our own agendas aside, seek your wisdom and your counsel, and may all of us leave Homestead better than we found it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Councilman Shelley, will you please lead us in the pledge? Yes, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance is to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May be seated. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Burgess. Here. Councilwoman Lobos. Councilman Maldonado. Councilman Shelley. Here. Councilman Williams. Here. Vice Mayor Wallman. Here. Mayor Bateman. <coughs> okay, now at this time I'm going to open the floor to public comments. So do we have anyone that would like to share anything with us? No, not at this time. All right. Um, uh, uh, deletions or additions? None. Okay. Um, do the public, do, do they have the corrected agendas with the tab changes and everything? Okay. Okay, fine. We had a few changes yesterday, so. Okay, special presentations at this time. Um, I'll turn it over to our city attorney. Uh, as we had discussed at, uh, at a prior council meeting, this year marked the 20th anniversary of our law firm. And we tried to come up with an idea of, uh, to show the community, to show um, the cities that we represent, uh, uh, that we were grateful for the fact that uh, we had had the 20 years and to somehow mark that anniversary. So what we did was in each city that we represent, we did an essay contest. Um, and from April 4th to May 2nd, 2011, we solicited essays from students living in Homestead for uh, essays entitled, Why My City is Special. And we had a very good response from this area. And Councilman Maldonado and myself and Brooke Delar from our office read through all the essays. And um, the, uh, we've selected the winner who's here tonight. His name is William Dodd, who's a senior at Homestead Senior High School, and if um, Mr. Dodd would come up here. And he's, uh, he's here tonight with his fiance, and uh, congratulations. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Mr. Dodd, uh, there were 500 word essays, and uh, we're going to have Mr. Dodd read his essay, and then I'm going to give him uh, his uh, award. Both the sparks bursting into the night sky, smoky fog dripping down slowly as the beautiful lights die in the midst of the air. I love to feel my teeth sinking into the beefy barbecued bacon cheeseburger and to enjoy an ice cold root beer soda which quenches, <laughs> quenches my thirst. 
in a perfect satisfaction. Uh, I love visiting Homestead Sports Complex on the 4th of July. A celebration takes place annually at, sports com at, sport at Homestead Sports Complex on the 4th of July. Approximately 1,000 people come to hear music, watch performances on the coastal fields before all of the action really takes place. Homestead may be stereotyped as, as the country part of Miami, but on this day, firecrackers make it resemble bright lights in a large city. While everyone, went, sorry, while everyone else is, paint, is playing with sparklers and firecrackers in their modern backyard, we, we homesteaders have a, has a, have a specific place to gather around and just rejoice in a, in a sense of community on such a calm, relaxed day. More race, more of the special activities aren't limited to just the summer. Filthy white sneakers, hay in my hair, and dirty hands never stop me from visiting our annual homestead rodeo. Here's, here's where all the bright lights in the big city fade away and the country flavor bounces back on, this, on the scene. The best part about the rodeo is getting to watch animals in action just, just as one would do by watching the Discovery Channel. Only here it is live in color and firsthand. Zerome, those are the sounds jet. Those are, those are the sounds of jets soaring through the night. I mean, soaring through the sky during wings over Homestead Air Show, over over at the Air Reserve Air Reserve base. I literally wake up to their morning alarm, and that's not even the awesome part. People <laughs> park their cars in backyards by nearby lakes. Just I mean, yeah, just to see twin planes zooming through. Zooming through the skies and doing all sorts of neat tricks. Last but not least, there's the Homestead Miami Speedway at and the Homestead Miami Speedway and the Homestead Bayfront Park. The Speedway is the stadium where the NASCAR races are held. Every time, every time there's a race, I can literally hear zooming sounds crashing through the wave, crashing, crashing in the air, in the airwaves, and ringing through my ears like thunder thunderous clashes. In addition, once you enter Biscayne National Park, you'll fall in love with nature. You can go canoeing or walking in the in the farthest and in the farthest end of the deck to to see out to see out into the beautiful ocean. Digging in the sand, you'll find unique shells, crabs, and tadpoles. Other sites and events, including the new paintball stadium by the Air Reserve by the Air Reserve Base and, no sorry, the rib, the rib Fest every November at the Air Reserve Base Park and also Cinco de Mayo ce celebration held at Harris Field. I never forget to stop by for a free scrumptious and delectable tostados. These, these attractions and, activity, and activities make Homestead unique. The next time you're passing by or around the area, you should definitely look into, seeing, into staying the weekend in Homestead. I was, it will surely be a life-changing and memorable experience. So, on behalf of our firm, I'd like to present you with this $1,000 check to be used however you feel like you would like to use it, and congratulations. Oh, and here's the real check. William, William, why don't you make sure that um, our clerk has your name and phone number and address because maybe um, there's a few people in the audience, including we here at the city, that could help you make some of your dreams come true by visiting some of the things that you mentioned in your essay. I thought it was beautiful. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Shelley? Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, about six months ago or so, I created a, uh, a program that allowed local artists uh, or of various types, would be photography, uh, painting, sculptures, any type of thing, to display their work here and showcase their work here in the council chambers. Um, for the next two months, for June and July, 
uh, Mr. Paul Marcellini will be the photographer who will be displaying this beautiful work here in the chambers uh, for us all to enjoy. Paul has been internationally published and won several photography awards. Uh, the most recent award was for an image of Biscayne National Park that won grand prize in the Florida Wildlife Magazine 2010 photo contest. Uh, Paul grew up in the Redlands and his family has a history with the city of Homestead. His father received a Homestead key to the city for his community service as the president of the East Everglades Orchid Society and for organizing several orchid shows in Homestead. His grandmother also has an avocado grove in the Redlands. Uh, I'd like to share a little story. The first time I met Mr. Marcellini, uh, for those who don't know, I'm an amateur photographer myself. I like to get out there in nature and, and take pictures. So I actually, I was chasing a lightning storm. I ran out to the Everglades about 30 miles out there, dressed in my bug suit, I've got thick pants on, I've got snake boots on, and I get to my spot that I want to take the picture. And there was Mr. Marcellini. He's definitely more at one in nature than I am. He had shorts, a t-shirt, he was barefoot, walking around, no concerns, and I'm worried I'm going to get bit by a snake. So <laughs> he, he, he definitely looked, uh, is, is better than I am. But at this time, I'd like to invite Mr. Marcellini to come up and tell you a little bit about what he does and his work and maybe give you some uh, information on how to contact him in case you're interested in purchasing any of his work. Hello everyone. Um, I'd like to say thanks for having me here. It's definitely a privilege to have my work. Oh, do I need to move that over? Um, yeah, like Councilman Shelley said, I'm definitely more at home in uh, flip-flops or whatever over being dressed up. But anyways, um, most of my work is South Florida. Everything hanging here is uh, Tampa South. Um, a lot of Everglades, Biscayne Bay, and that's what's great about down here, you know, everyone talks about Miami as being such a developed area, but the Everglades is 1.5 million acres. On the other side we have Biscayne Bay. Um, it's actually one of the only places I think that has two national parks bordering it. Um, Big Cypress is another 750,000 acres. So we really do have a lot of wild places to escape to you know, for even a day trip, nothing, no big excursion at all. Um, so that's what I've grown up doing, you know, going out to the Everglades since I was a little kid, and Hinga Trail, um, you know, big tourist spot. So a lot of this is a little more off the beaten path than, you know, Anhinga Trail, but it's still, you know, a beautiful wild area, and I'm wanting to show Florida. A lot of people, I do art shows, and they just can't believe this is Florida. They don't know this is their own backyard. So, you know, I'm definitely privileged to be able to hang this in a public uh, place. And so thanks for having me. Um, my website is paulmarcellini.com. It's uh, M-A-R-C-E-L-L-I-N-I. -I. Um, I sell fine art prints. And, you know, if you want to get out swamp tromping with some alligators, give me a call too. Thank you. Thank you. They're, they're so beautiful. I, I just commented to Councilman Shelley that, that they look like paintings. I mean, they're just beautiful, beautiful. And if my husband calls you, tell him no. Because <laughs> he's, 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 he loves photography, and I don't want him kidding by alligator. <laughs> um, Ms. Laura Mavericks. High school. Do you need me down there, or you do? Okay. Good evening. I'm here tonight to make a presentation to Ms. Judy Waldman and the City Homestead in regards to their support for Mavericks High. Recently, I don't know if Judy knows this or not, but last week I was appointed principal of Mavericks High. So I have taken over the role of making sure that Mavericks High goes in the direction of success. I'm very excited about it. I believe in our children. In the city of Homestead, there is definitely a need for a program like Mavericks High. And we have taken every step necessary to make sure that these students who struggle in other areas of learning in other schools or in daily life have an option to be able to finish their high school diploma. Last week we had our graduation, my first graduation with Mavericks High 
we graduated 16 students who would have otherwise, two of them I personally convinced not to quit. They were going to go for their GED, and I told them, you're not doing that, I'm sorry. <laughs> and they did it. They graduated. And Judy Waldman came out and supported us at our graduation and made our kids feel extremely special. And tonight, I just wanted to, on behalf of Mavericks, tell Judy thank you and give her this plaque that says, in appreciation of Judy Waldman for your support and dedication to the students of Mavericks High 2010-2011. Thank you so much. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much. This wasn't necessary, and I'm totally surprised. Thank you. But I have to tell you, and, and I told the kids last, I think it was a week ago yesterday, that um, even though I've had the opportunity to speak before many graduating classes, that meant more to me last Monday night than any speech I had given to students because these were kids that were really going to go the wrong way had they not had beautiful teachers and devoted teachers like Tammy that guide them and take them by the hand and say, yes, you can. Yes, you can. And um, it was my pleasure. Um, one boy, he didn't even know how to read when he came into Tammy's school. It was ninth grade, right, or tenth? He didn't know how to read, so we gave him a certificate to um, a bookstore so he could get summer books, and um, it was just so touching. There were so many happy, happy parents in the audience, and it was my pleasure, pleasure and privilege, and, and congratulations. I've known, this, I've known this young girl for many, many, many years, and we have family together, friendships together, and she's going to make a wonderful principal, and I look forward to working many years with you, Tammy. Thank you. Thank you very much. I guess I'll just stay up here since I'm on next. <laughs> and that is the Relay for Life. So, Mike, could you join me? <coughs> Excuse me. I'll just say a little something about Michael. Michael is our Relay for Life chairperson. Um, I'm so proud of him. He works for the city of Homestead. And as a cancer survivor, breast cancer survivor, no one knows more than me how much it means to have people in your corner fighting for our survivors and our people who are still going through it and the people who cross the finish line a little too fast. But um, I chaired Relay for many years, and I know how hard it is. So I'm, I'm, you're, I'm, I'm, I'm in under your shoes. I understand. And this young man, he just gave it his all. He really, really did. And I'm so proud of him. And he wanted to give some presentations tonight. So I had to, had to say how wonderful you are, Michael. And I talked to the manager. And this year, the city is going to get more involved. The city, every department used to have a team. Every single department had a team. I'm looking at all you directors over there. And we've got to come back. We've got to show the community that we not only expect you to participate, but we have to do it too. Okay? Sorry. Good evening. My name is Michael Hitt. I'm the event chair for the 2011 Relay for Life, as well as serving as the team captain for the city of Homestead. The Relay for Life is more than just a fundraiser. It is a life-changing event that gives everyone in communities across the globe a chance to celebrate the lives of people who have battled cancer, remember loved ones lost, and to fight back against the disease. It also represents the hope that those lost to cancer will never be forgotten, and that those who face cancer will be supported, and hope that one day cancer will be eliminated. People often ask me, why do I do it? Simply put, five years ago, Christy asked me to. I'd never heard of the Relay for Life prior to that, but I found out that it was a great way to honor my father. After all, that is what the Relay is about. To me, my father was the greatest man in the world. Although he was overseas fighting for his country when I was born, he was always there for me, always encouraging me to work harder, make the right choices, and overall be a better person. After serving in the Army for 22 years, he retired, and we moved to Homestead. Shortly after, the years of long working long days to provide for his family, combined with his smoking and his exposure to Agent Orange in Vietnam, began taking a toll on him. 
We could tell something was very wrong, but never imagined. My dad was tough, and he was proud, too proud. He refused to admit anything was wrong, let alone go see a doctor. Finally, after the convincing, we, we made him go. Shortly after, we received the devastating news. He had an aggressive form of lung cancer. His fight began. After the first few chemo treatments, he came home with a smile, feeling strong. We were optimistic. Unfortunately, that optimism did not last long. The cancer soon began to spread all over his body, and we watched this man, once so strong and independent, suddenly needing help for even the littlest of tasks. Christmas Day of 1995 was the last time I saw a smile on my father's face. The following week, he could barely speak, let alone move, and on New Year's Day 1996, he lost his battle. But tonight is not just about me. We're here to recognize all the people who have generously donated their time, talents, and money to a very important cause. This year, the City of Homestead's team raised over $4,000 in, in the fight against cancer. And we still have more upcoming fundraisers. Even, you know, excuse me, each of these individuals has their own reason for helping with the Relay for Life, whether it was a personal experience with cancer or just out of the goodness of their heart. I'd like to take this time to thank every one of you for helping me make this year's Relay for Life a huge success. I mean, this can help you? Yes, please. Happy okay. Dana White. Here's Dana White. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to thank Mayor Steve Bateman, who's not here for allowing us to do this. Councilman John Burgess, who's nice enough to take a take one for the team in the dunk tank several, for several times. <laughs> Councilman Elvis Mondelato, he's not here right now. <laughs> City Manager George Gretzis, thank you very much. Okay. Eileen Fernandez is not here. Okay. I'm going to break this down by, by departments. First of all, did you say George? yes, I did. I'm sorry. Uh, the customer service department who helped me a lot. Richard Vega, please come up. And, as I call your name, please come up and get your plaque. <laughs> Betsy Mattiano, she's not here. Amanda Carr. Joshua Prater, Delma Luna, Tanisha Reed, Diana K. Bell, and Huberto Granados. City Clerk's Office, Lourdes Lanio, Patty Sullivan. Patty's here. Patty's here? I was. Was? <laughs> yeah. At procurement, Carol McPatrick. Parks and Rec. Dennis Maytan, who also decided to get in the dunk tank. Thank you very much, Dennis. And I'm sorry I cheated. <laughs> <laughs> I just kept punching. I paid my dollar, but I punched. Eric Weiss, who was an integral part of it, of helping me. Carrie Floody. No. Out of the Water and Sewer Department. Kevin White. Scott Yacht. Gary Schaefer. Nope, none. Electric Utilities. Marco Chiano. Ray Ramirez, Jason Wilkerson, Josh Ingram, uh, John Ingram rather, Jose Landrin, and Christy Thompson. She she was a wonderful. She she held my hand through this. All the questions I've had. Thank you very much, Christy. See, I didn't forget about you. <laughs> Building zoning, Fran Schwartz. From the police department, like thank Scott Bell, Ray Dijon. Jan Ornstein, Alyssa Bornis, Barker, nope, okay. and out of the Solid Waste Department, Milton Bailey. <coughs> I'd like to also thank our community partners in this who donate to all our bake sales and our, and our um, rallies, Diaz Supermarkets, nope. okay. and for the, for the kids who cook for our bake sales, An Anelis is a Gerardo. Okay. Tony. Better than it's Annie. Okay, Annie. Thank you. I was great. Tony Benningport. And I'd like to thank a few special people. First of all, Jasmine Lopez. She was there for me every day, for every event. Thank you very much, Jasmine. Woo! Jackie Pilkington. Her enthusiasm. <laughs> Drove me to keep to go more. Anna Panecki, thank you very much for answering all my questions and putting up with me. <laughs> Elizabeth Sewell, she's not here. Thank you to her. 
and Vice Mayor Judy Waldman. She has walked me through all this, and I appreciate every little bit she's done for me. Thank you very much. I said all the things I wanted to say about Mike. He's just a wonderful person. But I wanted to give him this beautiful plaque and um, just tell him what a fine volunteer you are and how wonderful you are to the city. And um, we'll see you back for Relay yes, for Life. Yes, ma'am. So congratulations. Okay, and here's a little. Oh, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Pictures? Jackie. Pictures? Jackie. Jackie, come back here. <laughs> no running. I wanted to tell Michael um, this past weekend at the bazaar, the Father's Day bazaar, we had um, a drawing, uh, a raffle, and it was uh, from uh, a sprayer that was given to us by um, Homestead, Homestead Moore, and we raised $337 for Relay for Life. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, that's the way you kick off your team. <laughs> Directors. <laughs> Believe me, once you do it, you'll never go back. I mean, it's such a beautiful thing to see. All right. Um, well, we're done with that. Consent. Consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? Move it. Second. Madam okay. uh, Vice Mayor. The item um, under tab three, which is the budget amendment, we'd like to take separately as an ordinance, but if you could approve the rest, and then we'll read that later on in the agenda. Okay, is that all right, everyone? Um, okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, moving on. Public hearings. Yes, please be advised upon items on the agenda are quasi-judicial in nature. If you wish to comment on any of these items, please indicate the item number you would like to address when the announcement regarding the quasi-judicial item is made. An opportunity for persons to speak on each item will be made available after the applicant and staff has made their presentations on each item. Swearing in, all testimony, including public testimony and evidence, will be made under oath or affirmation. Additionally, each person who gives testimony may be subject to cross-examination. If you do not wish to either be cross-examined or sworn, your testimony will be given its due weight. The general public will not be permitted to cross-examine witnesses, but the public may request the council to ask questions of staff or witnesses on their behalf. The full agenda packet on each item is hereby entered into the record. Persons representing organizations must present evidence of their authority to speak for the organization. Further details of the quasi-judicial procedures may be obtained from the clerk in accordance with Code Section 2-591. Any lobbyist must register before addressing the council on any of the following items. At this time, council members must disclose any ex parte communications they've had concerning any of the following quasi-items. Madam Vice Mayor. Yes. Uh, Mr. Attorney, I have a tab 11 and tab 14. I've uh, talked with both applicants. Madam Vice Mayor? Yes. Uh, I, too, on tab 11 and tab 14 have spoken with the, the applicants. And I have as well. Thank you. Okay. At this time, the clerk will swear in any persons who wish to testify in any of the following quasi-judicial items. Please stand, raise your right hand, and repeat after me. I state your name. Hereby swear or affirm that the information I present shall be the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. 
Thank you. You may be seated. Okay, let's get started. Tab 10? Yes, Tab 10 is a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving a request to vacate a portion of Northeast 30th Terrace and reserving to the City all rights over any needed public utility easements as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. I move it. John, Mr. Burgess seconded. All right. Um, staff report. Uh, staff recommends that the Vice Mayor and Council approve the resolution to vacate the a portion of Northeast 30th Terrace associated with the Marriott Ho Hotel, which would enable the hotel to construct its parking lot as approved in the site plan. Uh, pursuant to Resolution 2010-0772, the City accepted a right-of-way dedication from Villa Portofino East Community Development District for a portion of Northeast 30th Terrace. Subsequent uh, to the right-of-way dedication, the applicant applied and received a PUD and plat amendment from the city. The amendment provided for a slight modification and realignment of Northeast 30th Terrace in order to provide for the future development of the Marriott Hotel. As such, a small portion of the previously dedicated right-of-way owned by the city is currently included within the, Marriott, within the proposed Marriott Hotel site. The applicant is requesting the city vacate this 2,649 square foot portion of the road so that their parking lot can be built as approved it is no longer utilized or needed by the city. Okay. Any questions or comments from council? Okay, and I'll open it to public hearing. Um, would the applicant like to speak or up to you, whoever it is? Okay. Um, would anybody like to speak in uh, opposition or in favor of? I'll close the public hearing. Any final comments from council? We'll call those. Um, Councilman Burgess? Yes. <coughs> Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Vice Mayor Waldman? Yes. All right, next. Motion is approved. Oh, go Motion carried. All right, next item, please. Yes, moving on to tab 11. Tab 11 is the final order of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting a certificate of use to allow the operation of a restaurant with on-premises sale and consumption of beer and wine located at 2425 Northeast 8th Street as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. Move it. All right, I have a first and a second. Um, staff report. Staff recommends that the Vice Mayor and Council approve the final order granting the certificate of use to allow the sale of beer and wine for consumption on premises only. This request is made on the auspices of the City of Homestead City Code Part 2, Chapter 3, Alcoholic Beverages, Section 3.11, Public Hearing, uh, C Certificate of Use. The City has a very well-defined review process that requires an application be submitted then evaluated by the staff. Uh, and, the, uh, and the applicant. Staff makes the recommendation based on whether the applicant meets each of the six criteria in the code. The application is reviewed by the Planning and Zoning Board and the City Council. We've reviewed this application as staff um, and recommend the approval of certificate of use as it meets the criteria set forth in the code. The Planning and Zoning Board, however, voted four to two to deny the request. Okay. Nine. Yes, I'll give that to Council now. Mm -hmm. Mr. Burgess. Um, if I could, um, I've been out there and visited. Uh, I, I fully understand the uh, P&Z's concerns, but I also feel that this is um, a controllable situation to, to take care of what P&Z's concerns were. I've, and, and if anybody's visited out there, they'll understand that the patio is set up like a regular restaurant where you come in, sit down, Excuse me, you come in, you order, you sit down, you wait on your food, and you're going to be there. And from what I'm being told, it's going to be restricted solely to the, to the patio area. Um, their hours fall within, they, they did away with the extended hours that they had requested originally. And, and I understand that P&Z is concerned about getting into a car, but any restaurant that could happen at. And, and I feel like uh, we should at least give them a chance, and if we have problems, then... then uh, we go back to them and rectify, but I think it's important that we do give them a chance to try their their uh, brand or, or what, what Sonic is doing out there. It's a it's a new type of Sonic with the beach and all that that they've put out there, and I, I believe it's what they're shooting for is to, for it to be like any normal restaurant and a family atmosphere in there, and not a big bar type atmosphere, 
and I and I believe w w what was explained to me is that they can control going in and out. So if people are trying to order and take it out to their cars, that they could uh, that they they're going to put controls in place and make sure that doesn't happen. So um, I, I will be in favor of this. I think it's a good thing for <coughs> for the business, and and I think we need to be supportive of them, and I think it would be a big plus for them, and I think it will be another a plus for the the citizens if somebody wants to go out and partake in those type of activities. So. Before I take um, other comments or questions from council, I just want to say that I too was under the impression that people were going to drive in, order a beer, order a glass of wine in their car, and have the opportunity to drive off. But that is so entirely not the truth. It's not the facts. So, and not only is it a patio area, it's a fenced patio area. And I did a lot of research on this. I made sure that the people were schooled, they were taught, they were trained professionally. They know that those beverages cannot leave that patio area. So to me, it's no different than going to Applebee's or any other restaurant where you have a controlled situation and you have um, rules and regulations. And those rules are that you do not leave that patio area. So. I'm in favor for it as well. I don't know if maybe it wasn't. I, 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 I was kind of confused with the PNZ ruling. I understand that it's always a danger, and it's up to the server not to serve a person if they've had too much to drink. You have to be very careful with that. So with that being said, I had to put my two cents in there because I, I too was under the belief that it was going to be. I still can't get over the drive-through liquor. Uh, Stores. I mean, and if you want to complain about something, that's something you complain about. But, uh, but anyway, any other comments or questions? Madam Vice Mayor, um, same thing. I, I had the same concerns. I read this uh, application and I was thinking, well, why would a fast food restaurant need, you know, beer and wine? It just didn't make a lot of sense to me. And I read the P&Z minutes and I had similar concerns. And so I actually called the applicant and said, I want to come see your, your operation. And I did go out there this morning and I looked at it. Um, and it's a unique business model. What it is is essentially you have your normal fast food, which is your drive through window. You have what Sonic's known for, which is your drive up, park and eat. And then you have this new bottle that, that I guess Sonic is pursuing now that is almost like an outdoor restaurant. That's really what it is. There's TVs, it's fenced in, you sit down, you, you see somebody get seated. Um, so it's a unique business model, which I hope succeeds. I think it's, it, it fits here in the city. Um, so it did alleviate a lot of the concerns that I have regarding giving them beer and wine or the ability to, to sell beer and wine. So I, I do support this as well. Mr. Yeah, I just got a, uh, one question. I don't know if the applicant can answer it. Um, but what control mechanisms do you have in place to uh, to guard, to have a safeguard uh, uh, with these some of these concerns? They can answer. The applicant would like to step forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Johnny Winton. My address is 15 Shore Drive East. Uh, the question is, and, and all of this is regulated by the state of Florida. So we have, in fact, we have the person who owns the company or runs the company. Uh, we're required, in order to have a license to sell wine and liquor, we have to, we've hired a company called Responsible Vendors. Responsible Vendors not only trains our employees to understand exactly how to control the consumption of beer and wine, how you can deliver beer and wine, what you can do and can't do, but we're required also by law, by that license, to have them come back on a quarterly basis from now until, I guess, law changes, a quarterly basis to both test our employees test the system and make sure that we're following all of those rules and regulations and that our employees are in fact well trained to control the, both the consumption and the delivery of the product to our customers. Okay, thank you. That's, that's all I have. Can I answer your question, Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Burgess. It, it, to the applicant. <coughs> yes, sir. If it would ease the uh, mind of the citizens of Homestead and those that have concerns, would you be acceptable if we were to add a condition that said, because in the language it doesn't say, on the patio only. Uh, I think we would have no objection to that. That, that is absolutely. I mean, I know that's the intent, but if it's in the language. We have no problem whatsoever adding that language in. I think that would make everybody feel absolutely. a lot better. Absolutely. <laughs> we, we have, we never wanted anyone. We think it's irresponsible to have someone drive up and we hand a beer out a window. That doesn't make any sense at all. That's not what we're trying to do. We're just trying to provide 
a family-friendly environment out on that patio. It's only beer and wine, and we think that, that this, the community of Homestead, the people who are, are visiting our store, are really going to have enjoy it. We've created a, a sonic restaurant that's designed to provide not only high-quality product, but a fun environment for the citizens of Homestead who are coming. So that's our intent. Okay, Mr. Burgess, you wanted yeah, to? Well, I, I make a motion then that we add in the condition that the applicant agreed to, that uh, beer and wine sales would only be on the patio of the premises of, of a, the Sonic. Is that agreeable? Okay. Um, I just wanted to say that um, my husband went over and had lunch today, and he brought me back a hamburger. It was delicious. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, I just want the public to know that this company is bringing over 140 jobs to our community. I couldn't believe that that, that is <coughs> fathomable, and it, but it is, and, and to bring over 140 jobs. And, and my husband said it was really entertaining today to see uh, the, the, the servers on roller skates. You know, it brought us back to those 50s moments, you know, when you see the car hops going out of the roller skates. I think it's just an <coughs> enjoyable way to spend an afternoon. So. Uh, Madam Vice Mayor, I, I know how busy you are, but I, I can't help, uh, may I indulge you for one more moment about that very issue about jobs uh, in the community, may I? Certainly. We have hired about 140 young people, uh, all but a handful literally live in the city of Homestead. There's a few that live a little north of here, but I think they consider Homestead their community <laughs> anyhow. I have never been... I spent seven hours in the kitchen one day last week during the opening session with these kids that are working like you've never seen. They're fast, they're efficient, they were having a lot of fun. There's a good environment in there. I spent seven hours in there. By the time I left, one of the young people who was supervising that section told me, um, Mr. Winton, I have to tell you, I'm really happy that you were in here with us. But if you were really doing this job, I would have fired you four hours ago. <laughs> There's enthusiasm. They're great kids. I've never been prouder of a group in my entire life. And we have senior management here with us right now from Sonic Corporate Headquarters. They told us in the last couple of days that this is the finest crew of young people they've ever seen in a Sonic restaurant. Now that's a testament to the kind of work ethic that you all have here in Sonic. And I, I have to tell you, I'm just proud as I can be to work with these kids and very proud to be a part of the Homestead community. And thank, I want to thank the administration and all of you and the community here because the support we've received across the board has been unparalleled and I'm just thrilled to death to be a part of it. So thank you and thank you for indulging me. I'm sure you, we will all agree that makes us feel very proud that we have, well, of course, we know we have such a wonderful staff, but, uh, but it's nice to hear other people say it as well. So um, I guess uh, anybody in the audience, since we're under public hearing, who would like to speak in opposition or in favor? Okay, uh, one at a time. <laughs> My name is Claire Warden Powell, 2274 Southeast 27th Drive. I had the pleasure of speaking at Planning and Zoning. I now have the pleasure of speaking to the Council. Jobs. 140 jobs. Serving hamburgers is great. How many more are they going to hire to do beer and wine? Traffic. Traffic is already backed up. I've heard from my Toastmasters group how traffic is bad. I just talked to the minister. Traffic is bad in the area. Family friendly. Family friendly. Oh, honey, let's go down and get a hamburger. Oh, let's get beer and wine and have the kids sit with us. Not family friendly to me. And I do like to have a drink once in a while. I'm old and I'm allowed to drink. I'm over 21. To me, that's not family friendly. Also, being an ex-industrial engineer, you have to turn over so many so many people in that patio area to make your finances. You're, it's not going to be a sit down leisurely like the Longhorn or the Red Lobster or the Olive Garden. You've got to get them in and out off that patio selling their hamburgers and therefore you're going to have a quicker turnaround time with the beer and wine. It is next exit two on the turnpike. 
This is the first sonic that they're thinking about putting liquor in. I do not want to be known as Homestead City had the first beer and wine and Solomon Allen got killed on the turnpike. Sonic, you're out in the, be aware of your brand. You're known for hamburgers. You don't want to be known as a place to go get beer and, and a glass of wine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else like to say anything? Mr. Powell? Husband and wife there? Uh, Edward Powell, I'm going to give you a different address, 745 South Street, 18 Plain. <laughs> Are you trying to tell us something? <laughs> and we're divided. We were a two-family. Um, that chair of planning and zoning, uh, you did read the report. Uh, I did vote for it. It was 42. Uh, part of the concern, and what you don't see in the, in the notes, is when they came to us, there were no sketches, no pictures. Uh, the description was, we're going to put a railing around and put some bushes and height. Well, when you, I drove down back, drove past there, when we heard it, there was the, the, the covering, the patio, and four pillars. Pretty wide open to me. So really, I think they're coming to us, if they would have had <coughs> pictures of when I went by and saw the fence they were putting up, the fence is six feet high, and you'd need a ladder to get over to the top of it. And, I, and the other concern was that, that you, don't, you can't really get access to that area from the drive-in. And I'm not sure if they re, re, uh, changed that over to around to the, to the other side. But I think it was, that, that was a, the concern was that we didn't have all that information to make our decision and was voted down. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you for explaining that. Any other comments in favor or opposition? If not, excuse me for this, but these lights are so hot. <laughs> um, if not, then I'll close the public hearing and um, comments or questions from council, final? Everybody okay? Okay, roll call, Madam, Madam Mayor. we need to vote on the amendment first and then okay. we'll the noble final order as amended. Okay. Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Vice Mayor Waldman? <coughs> yes. Councilman Burgess? Yes. <laughs> Councilman Shelley? On the motion as amended? Yes. This is on the final. Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Vice Mayor Waldman? Yes. Councilman Burgess? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. City Attorney? Yes, moving on to your next item, tab 12. It's a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving a stipulated settlement agreement between the City of Homestead and the State State of Florida Department of Community Affairs concerning the evaluation and appraisal report, year based comp plan amendments, and the 10 year water supply facilities work plan and related comprehensive plan amendments adopted pursuant to Ordinance Number 2009 and Ordinance Number 2009 and providing for an effective date. I move it. Do I hear a second? Staff report? Vice Mayor, staff recommends that you and the City Council uh, authorize the manager to approve the resolution regarding the stipulated settlement agreement between the City of Homestead and the State of Florida Department of Community Affairs. This action would formalize the agreement between the City and the State on the water supply plan and would enable the City to finalize the evaluation and appraisal report based amendments to its comprehensive plan, uh, which would allow s subsequent amendments to the comp plan to move forward. Without this agreement, no amendments to the comprehensive plan, plan can be approved. Um, City ADAPT adopted uh, ordinance number 2009-0720 and 2009-0721, approving various comprehensive plan amendments that addressed issues that were raised in the evaluation and appraisal report. The Department of Community Affairs issued its statements of intent regarding those plan amendments on uh, October 21st, uh, 2009 and found them not in compliance. Subsequently, the parties agreed to resolve their issues involved in the administrative proceeding through this stipulated settlement agreement. Um, the proposed ag agreement identifies remediable actions necessary for the city to undertake in order to satisfy an in compliance determination with the DCA. Um, subsequent to the approval of the agreement, the city will have 60 days upon which to adopt such remedial actions. And these actions are specified in Exhibit B, which identifies uh, adoption of certain maps into the comp plan, revision to the potable water sub-element, revisions to the capital improvement schedule, and related revisions to the city's 10-year water supply plan. Any questions or comments from council? Is there anyone here tonight who would like to speak on this issue? All right. Um, 
Anyone here would like to speak in opposition or in favor of? I'll close the public hearing. Any final comments from Council? Roll call. Councilman Williams? Yes. Vice Mayor Weldon? Yes. Councilman Burgess? Yes. Councilman Schelling? Yes. Next item. Yes, moving on to Chapter 13. It's an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving the request of U.S. Century Bank for a rezoning from Agricultural District AU to one family, one half acre State District A2 for property located at 19201 Southwest 328th Street, as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. This is first reading. Move it. All right, second. Do I have a second? Second. All right, staff report. We recommend that the uh, Vice Mayor and Council approve the request to rezone the property from Agricultural District to the Residential Zoning Category, one family for per one half acre estate district A2. Um, the subject property was annexed into the city in 2009 with the comprehensive plan so future land use designation of estate density. At this time, the existing zoning is agricultural district. In order for the property to be developed as a residential, the land use and the zoning must be compatible. Uh, at this time, the state density land use and agricultural zoning are not compatible. The zoning which implements the land use must be changed to residential. According to the comp plan policy 2.1, the state density land use designation is implemented by the residential zoning categories of A1, uh, one family per one acre district, and A2, one family per one half acre district. The applicant is requesting the uh, zoning be changed to A2. This is specified by the comp plan and therefore is acceptable. No other analysis so was required um, and it was approved by the Planning and Zoning Board unanimously. Any questions from Council? Just one mm -hmm. for the attorney, to the, to the chair, to uh, James White. Uh, just to, to clarify, uh, they're going for A2, uh, um, one unit per half acre. If they did, were to come back, you told me the maximum that they could put on there would be 2.5 homes per acre, is that what you said earlier? That is correct. The, the future land use map designation on the property right now is a state density and that density pursuant to the comp plan allows for a max of two and a half. So at some point if they ever decided they needed more than max they would be allowed it would be 2.5. Right. If they wanted to, if they wanted to, uh, more than that they would have to come in and seek a future land use map change yeah. to some other de residential designation uh, with a higher density. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, if I may, um, I thought we, I, I, I remember this from way back, and wasn't it locked, uh, wasn't it like 2007 that we started uh, in the process of the annexation? 2009 may have been when it was adopted. It usually, I, I wasn't here at the time, but it usually takes a couple of years to do an annexation, so right. I would imagine you're correct in that. Right. And what it was, it was a 40-acre grove, and there was an additional 40 acres that at the time we could have annexed as well. I wish we had, but, uh, but it wasn't, wasn't to be. Um, and it was a wonderful thing because this would be our opportunity to have more expensive homes and to achieve the avalarum that we've always been looking for on acreage. We had even talked about one acre estates. So um, I have no problem with the half acre, but um, I just wanted you to know a little bit of the history that this, that this was something that came about and, and it, was a, it was a good thing that we did it. So is the applicant here? We'll open a public hearing. Good evening. My name is Matt Polak. I'm president of Chisholm Architects, 4921 Southwest 74th Court. I'm here to answer any questions regarding the, the application. Any questions or comments to... I'm sorry, your name again? Matt Polak. Matt. Okay, Matt. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, would anybody like to speak in favor or op opposition? If not, I'll close the public hearing. And any final comments or questions from Council? Madam Mayor, just before you vote, I, I would like to disclose that um, from time to time we have done a closing for Century, um, for Century Bank. Okay. <coughs> Roll call. Vice Mayor Waldman? Yes. Councilman Burgess? Yes. Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Thank you very much. You're done. <laughs>
Move. Uh, next item. Yes, moving on to your last quasi judicial item, tab 14. This is an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the development order for the villages of Homestead Development of Regional Impact, finding that said amendment does not constitute a substantial deviation, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. This is first reading. Can I hear a motion? Okay, second. Staff report. Staff recommends that the uh, Vice Mayor and Council authorize the City Manager to approve the notice of proposed change to the Villages of Homestead DRI. This would facilitate the large-scale amendment to the comprehensive plan allowing the Speedway to expand by 12,000 spectator seats, create an enhanced fan experience area, incorporating display areas, merchandising, and entertainment, and food areas. Additionally, it would uh, consolidate the existing chalet village and overflow parking by realigning Southwest 137th Avenue and relocating Southwest uh, 336th Street. As part of the process enabling the expansion of the speedway, the city must consider a notice of proposed change to the previously approved DRI. Um, this type of change is required when the applicant is proposing simultaneous increases and decreases to a multi-use DRI. And it's done so to show that the changes do not represent a substantial deviation from the approved DRI. Um, we reviewed the application's extensive data analysis against the substantial deviation criteria as defined by the state of Florida. As a result, it's agreed, or we agree, that the uh, proposed amendment to the DRI does not create a, an additional or unreviewed regional impacts compared with the impacts of the baseline 1985 uh, development order. Any questions or comments? Mr. Shelley. Madam Vice Mayor. On this, on this issue, I, I support the expansion, I, I support the, um, the application, but, but the question I have, the concern I have, is the last uh, hearing we had, I think, involving this applicant, it was on land that they owned at the time. Well, this is land that we own, so when we, when we go through this modification, um, if they put in an expansion or, or building additional improvements on our land, theoretically there, there could be a tax increase to us at the city, because we're paying the taxes on the land. Um, and I know that we, we kind of discussed that in detail at the last hearing, but we never really got any additional information provided to us since then. And so, uh, you know, my concern is, I don't know what that number is. You know, I, I feel a little uncomfortable. I have some concerns in that it's an open-ended number. We don't know what the improvements are. We don't know what the potential tax liability would be. Maybe it's small. Maybe it's the diminished amount. And it's, not, it's not even worth looking at because of, of the benefits that the track brings to the city. Um, but it is information that I think I would like to have. It's something I would like to look into between now and, say, a second reading um, before, I, before I give any kind of final consent on this. So, I mean, it's something that I would like staff to look at. I don't know if any, anybody else on the council is concerned about it, but it is something that I'm I'm concerned about and would like to see some sort of discussion take place as far as what tax of consequences might come to us at the city and, and see if there's some way of resolving that over time. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Well, just to his tax consequences, we are, <clears throat> as most of you know, I asked for and received permission from this board to, uh, to move forward in, in an initiative to try to help us uh, to do away with the uh, ad valorem tax that we have out there, or, or maybe not specifically <coughs> do away with it, but find a way to get it funded. And we have reached out to the Speedway. Um, we've reached out to a lobbyist uh, um, firm that, that, that helps the city. And we are now putting together and, and should soon have uh, a, a strategy that, that I would like to bring back to you guys as soon as we get it. Unfortunately, one of the gentlemen that was working with it has lost both of his parents in the last six oh. weeks. So we've been set back a little bit. I would have hoped they've had something by now. But we are in the process. They have been willing to help us. And, and uh, I think we're going to come up with a strategy that will, will hopefully and, and, and should work in Tallahassee and will help us not, not to do away with the ad valorem tax because that is a big burden that, I, that the whole state has to, to do away with, not just Homestead or, 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 the, or the Speedway. Mm -hmm. But our strategy is to go after a different route, and I think that so. Um, not to answer what the taxes are going to be, Mr. Uh, Shelley, but that we are working on that to try to do away with that. So uh, just a quick update. Yeah, certainly. And, and yeah, I, I, um, I've talked to the track about it. They're working very hard with, with us at the city level to address that tax issue, and so I, I want to commend you for that. And uh, I think together we'll be able to solve the problem. My only concern as is, is the person voting on this is that until I have more concrete numbers, it just gives me an uneasy feeling. And, you know, but once I see it, once it's explained to me, once we have the facts, then I think I'll be fine. But I, until I have them, 
I, I, you know, if we don't, the solution doesn't work, then I will have voted for something with an open knitted potential liability, and that concerns me. Um, and that's, I just want to make sure I state that for the record, and, and hopefully we can get that addressed and some information that comes forward before the second reading. And I too share those same, those same thoughts, and that's why, um, and, and I think from what I understand from the Speedway, they share those thoughts, and they know that that has been a thorn in, under the saddle since the inception of the racetrack. And as they expand, they realize it's even more and more of a problem. So, but I, I agree with you. A specific number would be would be helpful, so that when people do ask me, I, I can give them some sort of some sort of round figure. You know, n n of course, nothing's exact, but uh, that. But uh, let okay. it be known that we are working hard to do away with it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Burgess. Um, I just want to say that I, I, to me, the track you put Homestead on the map. You put Homestead on the map. Without you, we wouldn't have had the growth that we needed to save our city back in 2002. We wouldn't have had that growth, and we needed that growth, no matter what some people may think. We had to have it in order to survive. And as far as the Avalon goes, you know, you have in your presentation, this, this is going to be spread out even 12 to 15 years. Am I correct in that? Yes, so I don't know what kind of figures you're going to come back with to really satisfied because it's, it's so far out, you know, it's such a far time. But it would devastate this city, it would devastate this racetrack if we don't move together as a group to, to make this happen for you. Because the last thing in the world that I want to see is a negative, something negative, when we're already fighting to keep you here and to keep that race here. So to me, we have to be very, very diligent and we have to really know what we're doing when we make this vote. And I completely support you, completely support you. And I'm just worried about the figures that are going to come back as to how clear that's going to make. Can anybody answer that? We'll have to uh, get you the best figures we can. Uh, yeah. Whatever we give you will be an estimate. But those figures are based on today. And, and not going to be based on the future. And I think, I don't know the exact date, but I think we go back with certain contract negotiations in like 2016, 2017, don't we? This, old, this brain isn't working as, I think it's approximately 2016, 2017, we go back and we, we have the ability to renegotiate some things. It, it's many years off. It's actually longer than that. 2016 is, um, I think, uh, there's a bond issue that comes into play at that okay. point. And, and if I'm not mistaken, um, in 2020, there's a lease payment change. Okay. Uh, but the renegotiation is at a point even beyond that, I believe. Okay. And, then, and then this is even, like you say, 12 to 15 years. It is. So, so I, just wanted, I just want us to be very um, diligent with, with you know, some of the, the issues of how important this is to keep this racetrack healthy, alive, vibrant, and bringing all those people here every single year. So any other uh, comments? Or yes. Sir. Yeah. Let, me, let me ask, uh, well, let me first say that uh, I've always supported the, uh, the racetrack, and um, um, I think this is a wonderful opportunity um, for the expansion, even though it's, you know, many years away. And I share the same uh, sentiments with my colleagues, um, but I, as, as I agree with Vice Mayor, I don't know how much real numbers that they're going to bring back that will affect my decision at all uh, in this expansion. So I wanted to put that on the record so that you understand exactly what my position is uh, with your expansion of the track. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Mr. Well, Madam Vice Mayor, the only reason I would ask for something is <clears throat> there has been some some lobbying by residents and stuff that uh, perhaps aren't throwing out real numbers. Um, so I, I don't want people getting those numbers in their mind either. That's what I'm and, saying. And having, a bad and having a bad taste or a bad education on what's trying to happen out there with numbers that you know, even if we use today's numbers, okay, we have to take it uh, with, with a grain of salt and say it is today's number. Exactly. But at least it would be somewhat real. Where uh, w when I go to people and we talk, I hear a lot of not real numbers coming up. 
as to what it's going to be. And, and if I may answer, that's exactly the point I'm trying to make, is that the right. figures that you get are not necessarily going to be the figures no, that are I, going I, to be in, in... Right, I understand that, but at least the, the, the figures that we have would be somewhat realistic compared to some numbers that are being thrown out there now that are, are totally warped to one side of the argument. Gotcha. Okay, any other comments or questions? Any comments or questions from the audience as far as opposing or in favor of? I'll close the public hearing. Welcome. May, I'm sorry, may, yes. Mayor. Uh, one issue that I just want to bring to your attention. Um, on, uh, on the proposed uh, ordinance that's before your consideration this evening, on page uh, 7 of the CAR uh, on the ordinance, paragraph, <coughs> paragraph 2-18, which deals with water conservation, a um, little halfway down in the middle, it says, um, these devices and methods shall satisfy the criteria outlined in the water conservation plan uh, of the public water supply permit. I've spoken with the applicant about this, um, and staff is proposing that we delete that actual sentence from this condition. The criteria outlined in the water conservation plan is an exact criteria. It's a number of layered ordinances and, and um, a number of uh, different policies that the city has in place that's generally applicable to everyone. So um, we're recommending just to take that language out. It does no harm, really, because the overall water conservation uh, policies and plans that are in effect for the city are going to be generally applicable to the applicant anyway. Have you had a conversation? I have with Ms. Tappanis, their counsel, on this issue. Okay, so the motion would have to be amended? And this, is that 219 or 218? 218, paragraph 218. Well, I'm, I'm in, I move that we uh, uh, strike out 2.18. I'll second Thank that. you, Mr. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Burgess. Not, not all of it, just that one sentence. That's what one sentence. Okay. Okay, so we need to first vote on the amendment and then vote on the original. And just to make matters clear so that everybody knows if you vote in the affirmative, that means you are moving this forward. Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Vice Mayor Waldman? Yes. Councilman Burgess? Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Councilman Burgess? Yes. Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Vice Mayor Wallman? Yes. Thank you. We'll see you next Thank you. month. Thank you. Okay. Now we move on to legislative matters. Okay, this is where we're going to add the, uh, the ordinance off of the consent agenda. An ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the City's fiscal year budget beginning October 1, 2010. Ending September 30th, 2011, by increasing the total budget revenues and expenditures by $4,178,120, providing for severability and an effective date. Have a motion? Second. And moved and seconded. Staff report. Yes, uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, this is. Uh, the purpose of this amendment includes to roll the amounts encumbered for an ongoing capital project to fiscal year end 2010 into the current fiscal year's budget to appropriate additional funds needed during the 2011 fiscal year for the Miami-Dade County Water and Sewer Departments. The city expected to finalize a contract with the county to pay bulk rate sewage fees, but the agreement has not yet been finalized. Staff recommends the Mayor and Council approve and amend the fiscal year 2011 budget for various funds as Thank you. This was on the um, cow agenda, so we have we had time to discuss it then. But I'll go ahead and ask if there's any questions or comments from council. I'll open up the public hearing, and uh, anyone in the audience that would like to speak in in favor or opposition. Final comments from council. Roll call. Councilman Shelley. Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Vice Mayor Wallman? Yes. Councilman Burgess? Yes. <coughs> Next item is an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the City of Homestead Code of Ordinance by amending Chapter 2 Administration by creating Article 25, Procedure for Settlement of Liability Workers' Compensation Claims, creating Section 2-700, Settlement of Liability Workers' Compensation Claims, providing for implementation, providing for ratification, providing for severability, inclusion of the code, conflicts, and an effective date. This is the first reading. Mayor motion. Move it. 
Second. Okay, staff report. Vice Mayor, since 1996, the city manager has had authorization to settle claims above $5,500 per Administrative Order 96-02-31. That Administrative Order did not set an express limit above that amount. The purpose of this amendment is to formally adopt the settlement authority allocation procedure in the code and also to set the limit for which the manager has the authority to settle at $10,000. Thank you. Any questions from Council? Yes. Quick Sir? Question. Um, do we have many of these uh, settlements uh, of this amount? I need some more seats up there. In the hot seat. Good evening. Um, they're routine in nature, and I wouldn't say there's many, but probably you'd have about three or four a quarter, something like that. Uh, another question uh, to, to the city manager, to the uh, to the vice mayor. Yes, sir. Um, will we be will we be able to get reports uh, of these settlements uh, if when they happen? Yes. Because I I know in some of them I don't get, I don't know if we've entered or you know for the the amount I've never gotten them other than the normal uh, lawsuits that we've entered into. We'll make a practice of uh, getting a uh, regular report to the mayor and council. Okay. Yeah. That's an excellent question, Mr. Williams. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? No? Any comments from the audience? <coughs> Final comments from council? Roll call? Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Vice Mayor Wallman? Yes. Councilman Burgess? Yes. Next item is an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the City Code by amending Chapter 6 buildings and building regulations by creating Article 13's unsafe structures, including enforcement procedures, providing for salvability, inclusion in the code, and an effective date. First reading. I'll move it. Do I hear a second? Second. Staff report. Vice Mayor, the Board of County Commissioners of Miami-Dade County, Florida adopted Miami-Dade County Ordinance Number 11-03. This ordinance permits <coughs> municipalities to adopt their own ordinances, establishing an administrative process to address unsafe structures within the municipal boundaries. It is therefore advisable to amend Chapter 6, Buildings and Building Regulations of the City Code to address unsafe structures within the city, allowing for a savings in cost and time. Thank you. Any questions or comments from Council? Anyone in the audience who'd like to speak in support or opposition? Final comments? Roll call. Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Vice Mayor Waldman? Yes. Councilman Burgess? Yes. Okay. <laughs> the next item on the agenda is um, presentation. To uh, lend a hand, lend a hand. I'm sorry, our tabs were, were kind of mixed up in our book this week, so we've had a little bit of confusion as we go through this. Um, tab 17 for all, for those that you know. And staff report on this. R Richard, did you want to do this one? Because I know it's a. Richard, I'm sorry. Yeah. Question. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. The staff recommends a donation of $20,000 to We Care South Aid for the Lend a Hand program. Uh, the approval of this item will also authorize the manager to, ex uh, to execute the enclosed memorandum of understanding. Just to give you a little bit of background, uh, the Lend a Hand program is a program we've been working with since 2005, uh, and we award them every year a $20,000 check. And we Care South Aid manages that program. Uh, and the program basically is to help customers pay City of Homestead electric utility bills. Uh, it's usually a one-time assistance program, um, and it helps people who are going through difficult situations. Uh, we have uh, we care we have a representative of We Care here tonight uh, that could give you a little bit more background on what they do with the program. They've done a very good job with us uh, managing the program, and we do refer a lot of customers over to them. And, like I said, they've been a good partner with us since 2005. Okay. Um, doing this a little backwards, but can I get a motion, please? I move it. Second. Okay. Perfect. Any other comments or questions yes. from the council? Yes. Yes, sir. Um, 
has has there always been a cap of two hundred dollars, or is this something that is new? Can anyone answer that, or maybe Kamitra could answer that? I'm sorry. Would you repeat the question? The question is, uh, has there always been a, a cap of two hundred dollars? Yes. Can we have your name and address for the record, please? Sure. Kamitra Driver, fifteen fifteen Redland Road. And Kamitra is the executive director of We Care. Yes, I am. <laughs> and this is something that we've been doing for... Since 2005. 2005. Yes. And it's really helped. I know, how many families do you help? We average every year, uh, we set out to serve at least 100 families, and we usually serve between 115 and 120. Because, because of the $200 cap per family, not every family that comes in requires that maximum amount. So we're able to stretch the dollars a little bit. Mm -hmm. And over the years, we've learned some valuable lessons, and we've partnered more with other organizations uh, throughout the cities of Homestead and Florida City that provide similar service to kind of stretch our dollars. So um, for instance, with the city of, I mean, um, the Miami-Dade County uh, Department of Human Services over at the Florida City Neighborhood Center. They have a program that helps with utility assistance as well. So we work with them to send our families there first to exhaust their funds, and then once those funds are exhausted, then we begin using the HELP funds. So we've noticed over the past years, we're able to, our funds, instead of lasting where the first year they lasted us four weeks, now we're able to last maybe about two to three months. It's a wonderful service that you do, and I'd like to ask my fellow counsel to join me at the, at the podium so we can make a presentation to you. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. <laughs> Vice Mayor yes. Waldman? Yes. Councilman Burgess? Yes. Councilman Shelley? Yes. I I'd hate to have to bring this big check back. He has been advanced because we failed. We're running back and forth trying to find Steve looking at me saying, I don't have that. <laughs> So it's our pleasure tonight to present you, to present you with a check for twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> Two things I want to say real quickly. Um, just I always like to clarify every year that We Care does not use any of these funds um, for administrative costs. All twenty thousand dollars goes directly towards uh, individuals that are getting assistance with their utilities. So it's an in-kind service that We Care provides because we really believe in this. And then on behalf of the board of We Care and then all of our partners. Um, Project SOS, Mujer, Infamilia, and Galata. I'd like to thank the City of Homestead for again making this donation towards us. Thank you very much. Okay, next we have on our agenda uh, business from the City Manager. So before that, if we don't mind, Mr. Burgess needs to go to a memorial. No, so I can't leave, so. Oh, that's right. Okay. okay. All right, go ahead. We wouldn't have a quorum. Uh, Vice Mayor, real quick, I just wanted Question. to I'm ask uh, Mr. I'm sorry. Question. But we're not voting on anything else, are we? No, but once the quorum is gone, it's gone. The meeting has to end. Yeah. So I'm fine. We'll keep it real quick. Uh, okay. Mr. Maytan has just a little bit of business regarding uh, our uh, cleanliness program and what we're going to need before a certain date. So I thought I could just introduce that on the floor so you could get the heads up. Okay. Good evening, Vice Mayor and uh, City Council. Um, today I received the uh, contracts for the uh, two uh, inmate crews that we uh, asked for you in March uh, Council meeting to go ahead and move forward. 
Um, the deadline for us to get it in is July 10th. So I wanted to let you know to be aware that the state has uh, awarded us the two con uh, inmate crews. So we can start to, you know, pick up on the uh, corridors around the city. Yeah, but we're going to probably need a special call in order to get it done, correct? Anyway? Correct. We're going to need a special call. Okay. What is your deadline? Uh, July 10th. So we're going to have somebody call you and try to coordinate that with some of the other issues that we discussed at the last meeting. Uh, so I just wanted to give you the heads up to expect that as well. I think we have a special call next Tuesday, correct? Yes. Well, it's been proposed. Proposed. Right. I, I don't know that we received consensus on that yet. Not at this time. We'll be scheduling that this week. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, City Attorney? No report other than I, that I uh, have been trying to work with the clerk's office to try to get <coughs> the special call meeting dealing with the so there can be a full discussion of these well, I'm lawsuits. Good. I'm good for and, it. And um, so. I know that uh, at least one council person is available Monday and Tuesday. Um, but I guess, Anna, you're checking with the, or uh, Elizabeth Sewell is checking with the other council members to try to make sure that we get as many people as possible. I sent you an email, um, which was a correspondence from Joe Sirota, just that the judge did grant the continuance, but is really anxious to have us consider this one way or the other okay. by July 1st. Thank you. Um, Council, uh, Council Michelli? Uh, nothing at this time, please. Yeah. Nothing. Okay. Councilman Williams? Uh, nothing at this time to help my colleague yeah. get to where he needs to be. Well, I, unfortunately, I do have to take a quick minute, but it's a very important um, thing. <laughs> well, then that, I, 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 I take that back and let me, I have about Just 20 minutes. one minute. I follow, you know I'm not long winded, Jimmy. <laughs> Homestead uh, Police, Project SOS, and South Dade Weed and Seed are putting out a back to school fair together again in uh, with Malay Sports out of the stadium Saturday, August the 13th. They would hope to raise, uh, or excuse me, get 2,000 backpacks slash book bags that they could give out. Last year they gave out 900 um, and they had a need for a lot more. So this year their goal is for 2,000. Um, any businesses, uh, individuals that would like to contribute can call and contribute. The number they can call is 305-224-5585. Uh, so like I said, and uh, I know I'm going to uh, contribute, so if any of my fellow council members would like to contribute also. Who would I be giving these to? Um, mostly to uh, the people that are already involved with it, that SOS works with. Okay. Um, and uh, they're going to take care of what they call their clients first. And, and then uh, with what they have left over as a remainder, they will get, uh, open up to the general public and uh, take care of them. Maybe we could do something combined because I know that the Mexican American Council, they always have a huge book bag drive as well. So rather than compete with one another, maybe we could combine that some way. I don't know. You might want to look into that and see what we can do. Would that be yeah, something you would mention to I them? Can, I can let them know. Okay. Um, uh, floor over at SOS is the one that's a contact person, okay. so I will let her know. Thank you. All right. And that's um, all I have. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to say anything except that um, it's getting close to 4th of July. So here's the little flyer. It's on our city website. Um, it's going to be at the racetrack again this year. We expect a lot of people. It's going to be fabulous. We have tons of entertainment for the children, um, bands, just lots of fun. Right, Dennis? <laughs> we really worked hard on this, so I hope you can come. And um, we have some business that we have to take care of before I adjourn. And that is Mayor Bateman um, has asked me to uh, bring forth Jack Patrick Seltz. Is he in the audience? Mr. Seltz? Um, he's been recommended to be on the uh, Firefighters Retirement Plan trustee appointment. Um, do I just need an I need a motion? Okay. I'll move it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. That passes. And so with that being said, I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you.